It's called a massacre. Three American mothers and six of their children ambushed by a Mexican drug cartel. More than 200 shots fired and their cars set on fire. The government is sending soldiers. This is just the beginning. It's going to be long. From sex and human trafficking to senseless murders and a terrible drug pandemic, Mexican cartels have plagued the U.S. for decades. Now, the U.S. government has been pushed to its limits and is declaring an all-out war against all the cartels in Mexico. But amid fears that millions would die from this operation, another danger has emerged, a danger that no one could have imagined. We're going to unleash the fury and might of the United States against these cartels. Drug cartels are a menace anywhere in the world, but Mexican cartels are another issue altogether. Apart from the fact that these crime organizations are ruthless, they also have affiliations with gangs in several parts of the world, like China, UK, and Australia. The gangs in Mexico date back to the 1960s and 70s, when Mexican drug trafficking organizations were just beginning to take root. Back then, the cartels weren't really violent or powerful, as they were simply middlemen to shipping drugs. But all of that would change in the next two decades, as an extensive criminal network was formed around drug trafficking. These gangs soon became the major suppliers of drugs to the U.S. Their influence and power grew even larger. Today, cartels in Mexico have grown so large they influence national affairs and have affiliations all over the world. Even more, these cartels now oppress the United States, the most powerful nation in the world. However, if there's one cartel that has been a thorn in the flesh of the U.S. for decades, it's the Sinaloa cartel. With a global influence and a notorious affinity for drug trafficking and racketeering, the Sinaloa cartel has done extensive damage to the U.S. more than any other Mexican cartel. No, 10 U.S. authorities have arrested two of the top leaders of Mexico's Sinaloa cartel, Ishmael Zambada Garcia and Joaquin Guzman. They're taken into custody today by the DEA in El Paso, Texas. The Justice Department believes the Sinaloa cartel, along with several other organizations, are responsible for trafficking fentanyl. Sinaloa controls most of the cartels in Mexico and has great influence over national affairs. If the U.S. can succeed in crushing the Sinaloa cartel, it'll have pretty much won the war against criminal gangs. However, with the leaders of the Sinaloa cartel currently behind bars, the U.S. military may already be on the path to victory. The loss of the leaders of the Sinaloa cartel, the biggest crime organization in Mexico, has upset the balance of the Mexican crime world. And now, gangs are at each other's throats. A heavily armed column of state police rumbles through the streets of Culiacan in western Mexico. They're providing extra security around the latest crime scene here. The government is sending soldiers. This is just the beginning. It's going to be long. We don't know how long. One year, two years, three years, maybe. It will go on for a long time. If things continue this way, the Sinaloa cartel, as well as other affiliated gangs, may rip itself apart from the inside out. But this is a gamble the United States government isn't willing to play. If there's one thing history has proven, it's that drug cartels are like Hydra. You cut off the head, only for another to grow in its place. Speculations are already running wide about who will take the throne of El Chapo and El Mayo. And once the new crime bosses are settled in and approved universally, it's game over. Authorities know this is the right time to strike, else their efforts so far would be all for nothing. More than 100 people are dead or missing in Mexico's western Sinaloa state since rival factions of the Sinaloa cartel began clashing on September the 9th, with the gruesome violence showing no signs of stopping. That's according to local authorities on Friday, as the country's president points fingers at the United States' involvement. Sinaloa's governor said more than 40 people have been arrested in recent days including Fernando Perez Medina, known as El Pii, the alleged security chief for one of the sons of the jailed former Sinaloa kingpin known as El Chapo, who now leads the Los Chapitos faction. In case you're wondering what's the cause of the Sinaloa gang war, it's due to the recent events. You see, while El Chapo may have been the first to fall prey to U.S. law enforcement agents, El Mayo recently followed suit under controversial circumstances. El Mayo's arrest was a carefully planned setup, and he blames the son of El Chapo for it. This turn of events has made the two families, which form two factions of the Sinaloa cartel, to be at war with each other. As it is, finding a leader for the Sinaloa gang won't be easy, as neither side wants to submit. Some 
Sinaloa hitman who managed to speak to the press disclosed that the war is just beginning. According to the source, the current face-off could drag on for months, a year, or even years. He also revealed that the current clash is attracting large numbers of people from other gangs and cartels, and the war won't stop until one side goes down. The hitman also revealed that the cartel is aware that the government is sending soldiers. They're pretty much geared up for anything at this point. For these guys, it's not just about power or money, it's about a legacy, about the future of the Sinaloa cartel. This is a war over the future of the Sinaloa cartel, and both factions, the Chapo and Mayo crime families, accept it'll only end when there is a clear winner. It's just getting started. One of the parties has to die for it to end. One of either side has to die. There has to be a winner. Speaking of a war against Sinaloa, it's beyond sending troops to gang hideouts to make arrests. The Sinaloa isn't your average cartel, as they have power and influence that reaches nearly every corner of the world. The cartel uses sophisticated weaponry like armored cars, automatic rifles, and high-grade bulletproof vests, stuff you'd see in military warfare. If the US and Sinaloa were to have an open face-off, the cartel could easily buy whatever arsenal it needed, or even buy an army if necessary. That's just how rich and powerful Sinaloa is. Now, if the Sinaloa cartel alone can pose such a threat. Imagine how hard it'd be to fight off all the cartels in Mexico together. Mexican cartels have been known to possess artillery beyond the reach of local law enforcement. These guys can arm themselves to the teeth if they mean business. Plus, the widespread corruption in Mexican law enforcement doesn't help matters. Usually, what cartels do when they need free reign is to wet the pockets of law enforcers so they turn a blind eye to whatever misdemeanor is being done. Powerful cartels like the Sinaloa and the CJNG even have members in top political and law enforcement positions in Mexico. The strong ties and deep roots cartels have in Mexican society and culture is what has made them prosper so much in the last few decades. It's also the main reason why it's practically impossible to eliminate all traces of drug cartels in the country. Even if the U.S. were to raid all Mexican cartel member homes and hideouts, they'd never catch the bad eggs in the heart of the country's leadership and law. Going to war against Mexican cartels is just like going to war against Mexico itself. This is because the cartels have eaten deep into the fabric of the country, so much so that they've got their legs deep in every industry you can think of. In some parts of Mexico, cartel members have even taken over completely, providing basic services to locals. So, ripping out Mexican cartels from its roots could literally cripple the economy, amongst other things. This high level of territorial control is what makes Mexican cartels so dangerous and powerful. And so, it's no surprise to see cartel crew patrolling communities, some in heavily clad armor and uniform, as well as military-grade artillery. Once, a Mexican cartel managed to gun down a military chopper with an RPG. Mexico's government claims the new generation cartel of Jalisco used rocket-propelled grenades last Friday to bring down this army helicopter, killing six soldiers. Mexico's interior minister says the shootdown comes as the Mexican government launches an offensive against the drug trafficking organization. However, one thing you should know is that as surprising as this is, it happened over five years ago. Back then, Mexican cartels didn't command the kind of influence and power like they do today. Intelligence has revealed that many of the cartels in Mexico, especially leading ones like CJNG and Sinaloa, have grown a lot more powerful in the last 10 years. This turn of events have made cartels more difficult to combat. The United States government, as eager as it is to cripple Mexican cartels, understands the need for a smart strategy. And all-out war won't do much at this point unless something is done to disrupt the framework of the cartels from its very core. Even the Mexican police have grown so fond of the cartels that some policemen do take bribes or women from the gangs in order to turn a blind eye. This is why gang-related violence is hardly addressed by local police, and locals keep dying by the day. It's called a Massacre. Three American mothers and six of their children ambushed by a Mexican cartel. More than 200 shots fired and their cars set on fire. In a Target 7 investigation, we learned one of the people Mexican authorities believed was involved was hiding here in Albuquerque. In case you're wondering why the U.S. is so bent on taking out Mexican cartels, the reason isn't far-fetched. You see, cartels like those found in Mexico or anywhere else in the world always have a desire to grow and spread their territory or scope of influence. And so, after conquering the country, cartels like El Mayo's Sinaloa began to plant members in the U.S. These gangsters 
gangsters were sent in via the U.S.-Mexico border. However, the real issue wasn't just in the gangsters and drug lords migrating illegally into the U.S., but rather, it's the damage these guys cause when they arrive. From theft to drug trafficking, racketeering, and murder, Mexican cartels have been a menace to the U.S. for well over a decade. Many of the drug lords from Mexico send their merchandise into the U.S. via these immigrants. Also, cartel bosses use the border to smuggle thousands of weapons and artillery, which they use in their crazy vices and gang wars back home. This is why the government has always had an issue with the U.S.-Mexico border. Every week, reports of immigrants smuggling in items like drugs or other humans keep popping up. The situation becomes more devastating when you consider that these criminal masterminds keep coming up with innovative ways to slip past the border and smuggle stuff. According to Customs and Border Protection, this disruption started at about 1.30 on Sunday, and this happened at the Paso del Norte Bridge in El Paso, Texas. Now, this connects El Paso to Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, and CBP says that they deployed physical barriers to, to stop this uh, attempted mass entry into the United States. Why? Why are we seeing this right now? We the border between the U.S. and Mexico has always been a bone of contention between the two countries. As far as the U.S. government is concerned, the high crime rate in the country is all because of these gang members who keep flocking in daily. Americans share this same opinion too, as many have called for stronger immigration reforms, with some requesting that the outsiders should be sent back to their state. Ever since the immigrant influx in the U.S., trafficking has become a menace, and gang-related violence has shot through the roof. Authorities believe the cartels are pushing their members into the the U.S. under the guise of helpless migrants in need of asylum. The state's southern border, where according to law enforcement, Mexican cartels are playing a part in the migrant surge into the U.S. Our own Andres Valle continues our coverage from the U.S.-Mexico border. Right behind this wall right here is Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, where migrants are lining up to get processed in order to seek asylum into the United States. Now, this process takes a long time, but some of them are taking desperate measures to get across. But make no mistake about it. The cartels are involved in everything occurring along the border. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Although the U.S. government has tabled the border issue to the Mexican government, nothing much has been done by the latter party. And frankly, there isn't much the Mexican government can do since the gangs technically run the country. As if that wasn't bad enough, certain key institutions like the judiciary system are very flawed. Criminals are hardly convicted in court. And for those convicted, prisons aren't secure enough to hold them. This flaw in the system creates a sense of superiority in cartel members and also makes the cartels seem cool and attractive to intending new members. This is why cartels flourish so well in Mexico, and even new names like the CJNG, which only surfaced a decade ago, have grown to become very powerful. secret that Arizona serves as a major corridor for illegals coming into the United States, now a new and more deadly threat has emerged. News 4 Tucson from Pete Mario digging deeper into what U.S. authorities call one of Mexico's most brutal cartels. Earlier this year, Operation Python resulted in the arrest of more than 600 cartel members in the United States. Authorities say the power and influence of one particular cartel is spreading far beyond the U.S.-Mexico border. Now, a new and even more dangerous player has entered the scene. El Cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generación, or CJNG. When they come into an area, they really come in really hard and heavy, meaning they will go in and start on a killing spree. Another thing that makes Mexican cartels grow so fast is the trafficking business. It is estimated that Mexican cartels gain 15 to $50 billion annually from tra trafficking alone. This money is what makes it easy for them to control high profile individuals in the state and to also acquire the best weaponry and technology available. This is why cartels can now obtain sophisticated tech and organizational structure that resemble those of special armed forces. Currently, Mexican cartels possess advanced communication systems, high tech surveillance drones, which are sometimes used to smuggle and custom-built submarines. But in the end, none of these contribute to the good of the country. If anything, it only makes the gangs more destructive and more mobilized to spread their influence. Ultimately, they become a bigger thorn in the flesh of the government. Well, one of Mexico's most violent cartels is suspected of leaving some gruesome warnings as it looks to expand its power into new areas. The cartel has dominated rural parts of Mexico for decades, but recently set its sights on Mexico City, and it's making those in tensions very clear. Well, Kelly, this week's morbid find of a severed leg dangling off a bridge 
is just among a string of recent incidents involving body parts, all suspected to be the work of the new Familia Michoacana, among the most ruthless of Mexican cartels. Before now, the United States' involvement in fighting Mexican cartels was limited to providing intel and equipment for the country's law enforcement. It was simply a support role. U.S. law agencies like the CIA and the DEA have been working closely with Mexican authorities to fish out and arrest cartel leaders. But it would seem all the years of effort so far have been in vain, as the recent threats and high-profile gang incidents have made the U.S. resort to a more direct military action. From crazy hom to deadly opioids like fentanyl, many disasters have been traced back to the Mexican cartel. A new flesh-eating drug heaping further misery on the drug addiction crisis in America. Our U.S. correspondent David Woywood's just returned from Philadelphia. Good evening, David. Good evening, Michael. Yes, look, it's confronting stuff. Uh, we visited one of America's great cities, Philadelphia, and we witnessed it being savaged by this new drug. Now, it is called Trank. It is highly addictive, and users, they are openly injecting and dying on the streets in Brooklyn or daylight. The scariest part about all of this, however, is that lawmakers still don't have much of a plan in place to try and curb its rapid spread. Ever since Mexico established itself as a major producer and supplier of narcotics, the U.S. has been their main market. From heroin to cocaine and meth, the cartels pump all these drugs through the border, making tons of cash and ruining many lives in the process. Today, there's a scary pandemic in the U.S., a pandemic caused by overdose of deadly drugs supplied by the Mexican cartel. Half-conscious addicts with deep sores and bent backs are becoming a more frequent sight in several countries, especially in the U.S. where the zombie drug has recently gained traction. Just in case you're wondering what kind of drugs can make people this miserable, it is Trank. But there's another drug making the headlines. Fentanyl, a synthetic drug 100 times more powerful than heroin. The effects of this drug are so powerful, they ruin the victim's body and coordination. But even more, many addicts die from overdose. So far, fentanyl has proven to be the worst pandemic ever in the history of the US, with over 70,000 deaths per year. Which is shocking to me because at the rate that fentanyl is killing people in this country, it is absolutely ludicrous that this is not on the front page of every newspaper and every news broadcast daily. One crazy thing about this is that the cartels make them in pill form. The pills are sometimes identical to pharmaceutical making it hard for authorities to detect. Sometimes the pills are also made to look like other narcotics like cocaine. This is why many drug users have overdosed on fentanyl by mistake. These guys never live to tell the tale because one concentrated pill is enough to kill you. The fact that many high school and kindergarten kids have been reportedly killed by this drug in the US shows just how much of a problem it has become. It's everywhere. The economic loss caused by Drugs like fentanyl is a gross $700 billion each year, over 3% of the United States GDP. With so many lives lost and the economy torn apart, it's no wonder why many Americans are calling for a complete closure of the U.S.-Mexico border. However, this action would not only ruin the relationship between the two countries, but would only enrage the cartels even more, putting Americans on the other side of the border at great risk. In recent years, there's been an increase in gang-related attacks on U.S. citizens in Mexico. Several Americans have been caught in the crossfire of cartel conflicts, further raising concerns over the safety of these migrants. This predicament also strengthens the U.S. government's decision to put these gangs in their place once and for all. Mexico and the U.S. have always had a mutually beneficial relationship, even for its citizens. With its lower cost of living and friendly tourism culture, many Americans find it favorable to travel to Mexico. Some American citizens even relocated to Mexico ever since the economic recession began. In 2022 alone, about 33 million Americans traveled to Mexico, and it's estimated that at least 2 million Americans currently live there. The number of U.S. immigrants in Mexico began to rise steadily since the pandemic and hasn't reduced since. And so, a total shutdown of the border will mean shutting off these American citizens from their home country. Plus, it would bring chaos and total oppression from gangs. A powerful Mexican Cartel has allegedly taken responsibility for the kidnapping of four U.S. citizens and killing two of them. Now they apologize. Meanwhile, the bodies of the two killed are now back on U.S. soil. Derek Dennis has details. A dramatic image out of Matamoros, Mexico. Five men found tied up near a pickup truck in the same area where the abduction of four Americans took place. A handwritten note on the truck's windshield claiming to be from the Gulf Cartel, saying we have decided to deliver those involved 
and directly responsible. A cartel-free Mexico would not only make the two neighboring countries safer and more prosperous, but would also boost trust, cooperation, and coexistence. But this is easier said than done. How do you flush out a crime network that has existed for decades and has more power and control than its government? How do you eradicate cartels that have roots in almost every corner of the world? And most of all, how do you ensure that the hydra head of these organizations never grows back again? The situation is critical, especially because Mexican cartels have gone from mere criminals to become a major threat to national security. If the U.S. doesn't take action soon, these cartels may take over the very soil on which they stand. But the government isn't willing to let this happen. This is why an all-out war has been declared. Cartels in Mexico have been terrorizing Americans for decades. We're going to unleash the fury and might of the United States against these cartels. We're going to destroy their business model and their lifestyle because our national security and the security of the United States as a whole depends on us taking decisive action. Just in case you're wondering what this means, it simply entails that cartels will be treated as terrorists. In other words, normal protocols will be waved aside and military power will be enforced. The US government is willing to do everything within its power to destroy not only the cartels, but their businesses and lifestyle. But then the cartels, just like the rest of the world, are well aware of how dangerous the United States can be when it comes to warfare. And so, if the full might of the US military is released, there's bound to be many casualties. Millions would die including innocent citizens. Is the government's agenda really worth putting millions of lives at risk? The president pulls me aside on at least a couple occasions and suggests that maybe we have the U.S. military shoot missiles into Mexico. Shoot missiles into Mexico for what? He would say to, to go after the cartels. And we would have this private discussion where I'd say, Mr. President, I, you know, I, I understand the motive because he was very serious about dealing with in America. I get that. We, we all understand. But I had to explain to him, we, we can't do that. It would violate international law. It would be terrible for our neighbors to the south. It would, you know, impact us in so many ways. Why, why don't we do this instead? A lot is at stake, which is why the U.S. government is calculating and planning out its next steps very carefully. Not only is there a chance that innocent lives would be lost, there's also the possibility of Mexico labeling the U.S. as an enemy. Think of it. Already the latest tactics of the United States government in apprehending El Mayo, leader of the popular Sinaloa cartel, has put the Mexican government on edge. If more direct attacks on cartel members are launched on Mexican soil, it may completely break the relationship between the two countries or cause an all-out war. Mexico's current and soon-to-be presidents visited our sister city today. Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador and Claudia Sheinbaum toured a new government hospital in Juarez as questions regarding exactly how the Sinaloa cartel's leaders ended up in U.S. custody. En efecto. We are going to wait, but it's true. They have not delivered sufficient information. They submitted very vague and general information that a plane arrived in El Paso, Texas. They had a prior set deal with Guzman Lopez, and when the plane landed, Mr. Zambada was also on the plane. With tensions already rising, any sudden harsh actions by the U.S. would completely make things fall apart between the two nations. But that's not all. You see, Mexican cartels are some of the smartest and most ruthless in the world. Immediately, the war begins, which it already has. They'll surely change their tactics and manner of operations. Furthermore, these gangs wouldn't just fold their hands and watch the government tear them apart. They're sure to launch counterattacks of their own. Given the zero regard for human life, it's safe to say that it's the poor and innocent citizens, especially those residing in Mexico, who'll become sacrificial lambs for these cartels. But there's another twist to this. The cartels, rather than eliminate citizens, may decide to recruit them in the fight against the U.S. government. If this happens, it would be a total slap in the face to the U.S. Already, Mexicans consider these cartels to be a part of the culture. They're like brotherhood citizens joined for protection and to have a sense of family. If the government suddenly begins attacking gangs in heavily populated areas, it may force citizens to join these cartels for protection and safety. This is one very likely possibility, and it leads to many questions. What if the U.S. government's all-out war on cartels ends up causing more harm than good? Is it really worth risking the lives of citizens and the ethical balance of the two nations? Are cartels really the problem, and do they deserve to be treated like terrorists?
The answers to these questions are still up for debate. The U.S. government is fully aware of the risks involved in this grand endeavor and how it may all backfire or yield counterproductive results. Still, the situation on ground is more or less about eradicating the greater evil. Cartels have proven to be the greater evil, as they're behind the majority of the crimes and misfortunes that have befallen the nation in recent years. And so, pressure is mounting for a full-on attack. Pressure is growing for the Biden administration to designate Mexican cartels as terrorist organizations after the kidnapping of four U.S. citizens. Two were killed. Two others are hospitalized, now in South Texas. However, it's important to note that the Mexican government is strongly against U.S. military intervention in the country. Mexico's history has been laced with various instances when they suffered several losses and misfortunes at the hand of the U.S. Till today, tales of suffering and deaths from the Mexican-American War of the 1840s are still being told. The war, which lasted two years from 1846 to 1848, left over 20,000 Mexicans wounded, while over 5,000 were killed and 10,000 went missing. Mexican natives have never truly forgiven America for the losses they suffered, especially the territories, including Texas, which was handed over to the U.S. for peace to reign. And so, there's no way the Mexican government or its citizens would allow for another U.S. invasion on their soil. The government believes that using more peaceful methods should be employed in the fight against cartels. Measures like alienating poverty and fostering education among locals will discourage locals from joining these cartels, thereby reducing their numbers and ultimately crippling them. But this is a long-term solution the U.S. government is not willing to take, especially not at the expense of its own citizens and economy. So, what will be? Peaceful negotiations or all-out war? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on the next video. Bye for now.